Now, since Bola Amatsinibu initiated or removed the subsidy in fuel, Nigerians, millions of them, have been uh, in, in, in a high tense where they fear what might come out of the fuel subsidy. Now, here we will look at issues from all angles of life, from all ramifications. By the way, this is the New Dawn coming to you live from Viewer Television. My name is Philip Slevin, and I'm together with. I am Chinon Sopam, and together we're going to be keeping you up to speed with everything that has happened in the country in the past week. Let's take a short break, and when we come back, we'll go right into the business of the day. Good to know that you are still with us on the new dawn coming to you on viewer television now here we'll look at all angles from all ramification of life that has to do with nigerians and and as as we know monday came with its own different ball game after the inauguration uh where uh president bola amtinibu was sworn in now the swearing in came in with his own extra i would say uh futures where he did remove the fuel subsidy. It's not like he immediately removed the fuel subsidy, but he stated that the fuel subsidy will be removed. Now, that created, that statement created a ripple effect, I'll say, where other filling stations, Nigerians, became scared of the possibility of if the subsidy is being removed, what could possibly happen? Now, that initiated or triggered a lot of uh, situations where the filling station owners raised the bar and the Nigerians were rushing, queuing, all to get, uh, I would say, the fuel for hoarding or whatever uh, reason others are thinking of uh, getting fuel at that day, that's Monday 29th during the inauguration. Now, this segment will be looking at the headlines that happen all through from Monday till uh, Friday. So we'll, have, we'll, we'll try and summarize everything for you so that you understand what has been happening all through and uh, get a picture of what has been happening from the daily headlines for, uh, for, for in Nigeria, rather. So um, for Monday, it was the inauguration and the president stating that he will be removing the fuel subsidy. And uh, for Tuesday... So let's, let's, let's dwell a little bit on 
the inauguration. Yes. Inauguration. Um, Nigeria inaugurated her 16th president, mm -hmm. her 16th president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria on Monday. It was such a colorful event. We must yes, state that. Yes, we have different dignitaries. Yes, from. and we loved the precision of, I, I couldn't but take note of the precision of the soldiers, the march past. It was a very beautiful thing to see. It was a very colorful event to see until we got to the president's speech. Uh -huh. People were waiting for that. We were all waiting for that. We, we were waited waiting for, for the president's speech until we got the news that the subsidy was going to be removed. Uh -huh. Right? Yes. yes. And that was the bulk of what happened on Monday. The, 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 whole, the whole papers the next day in the morning in the were morning subsidy removed, subsidy removed. All a go with subsidy removal. Yes. That 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 create that create panic in I would say the whole country yeah. where everyone was thinking, okay, if the subsidy is removed, it's better I get fuel and keep it at home. Mm -hmm. Possibly if it's removed, at least I'll have something to to, 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 to fall back to. Understand? Rather than uh, uh, getting or being in, in in being caught up in whatever the next price might be. Now talking about that angle of subsidy, we'll have a guest here who will be telling us uh, that's a financial analyst will be telling us more on the subsidy for those of you that are wondering why the subsidy what impact it's got on on Nigerians and possibly what could be the good news out of uh, that subsidy well uh, moving on still on the, uh, yeah so um the fuel prices went up mm -hmm. on Tuesday in fact that caused a lot of panic because here's what happened a lot of people left their houses for let's say you commute around town for the price of 600 naira you went out and upon coming back if your transport fare was 300 naira it became 600 and a lot of people were stranded uh -huh. right and that was because of the panic in town but officially i think this was on wednesday officially the fuel prices went up yes, yes. Uh, but it, it started it started uh let me see Monday night, where some yes. fuel station does sold as as high as seven hundred. Yes, but by 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 Tuesday it skyrocketed, and uh, by Wednesday after the NNPCL decided uh, after this they made mention earlier on Tuesday that nah nobody should hang it. Yeah, like they are not increasing. But all of a sudden they 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 just they just brought it they just brought out the atomic factor of it mm. by saying they have increased uh their their own uh, their own price that's from the usual 100 and something 100, 100 90 90 something mm -hmm. to 500 and something that 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 also is it's another future that has triggered mm -hmm. this whole i would say uh, permit me to use the word pandemonium pandemonium this, yeah yes in this situation yeah. and there's something to really look at in the fuel price prices because we we noticed that um lagos Places like Lagos had lower pump prices mm -hmm. than places like Abuja and up north. So we, yes. these are things that we'll, we'll be discussing with our guest. He'll give us insights as to why there was that disparity in yes. fuel pump prices. Yes. 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 And, and another thing, another thing to note is uh, the fact that, in as much as uh, the, the 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 price has been increased. The major problem is the fact that most or some filling stations just decide to, to, to close, you understand? Had it been there's availability and even if the price is high. Oh, they, 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 don't, they don't have customers because that's another thing. It's one thing for the fuel to be available. It's another thing for, for citizens to be able to afford to mm -hmm. buy petrol at 530 mm -hmm. something per liter. Mm -hmm. So these are all things that we'll be discussing with our guests. And the next thing we saw that happened was the president, fast on the job, he has begun naming appointees. Policy has yes. began naming yes. Yes, appointees. And um, the major ones we would look at is um, he named Kunle Adeliki as the chief, state chief of protocol, right? Mm -hmm. He was a former Lagos state commissioner, state chief protocol. And he also named Dele Alake as presidential spokesman. Yes, that, yes. That, that's my, that, that, that man has been on, on, I would say, every newspaper because mm. most most of whatever happened behind closed doors is usually the one. So even before people realize his position, 
mm. uh, before realizing his official position mm. he has been he has been he has been speaking uh what uh has been happening uh, within the presidency let's not forget the fact that okay uh, after after this whole force uh the apc governors because there are a lot of backlash about the price increase price hacker and all that apc governors came forward and like were like Yes, we agree with uh, the, the the new president's uh, plan to remove the subsidy, and if if only Nigerians can can be patient, definitely with time they will reap the benefits of it. Okay, we'll find out what these benefits are, and um, another appointment that um, that was on the headlines. This was yesterday. Was the naming of the incumbent speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, yes. as the chief of staff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, for me the implication of that is he will have to lose his seat I, I i have a feeling they might not take it immediately you understand possibly mm -hmm. he, he he has few i would say few few uh days left or mm -hmm. few few weeks left or a week left to to finish the that his position Maybe after that, that's when officially he can handle because I I don't see any I, I can't see the possibilities of him handling both offices together. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He won't be able to handle both offices together apparently. So um, one would have to give, mm -hmm. right? And um, okay, so we read again in the news that um, the the House of Representative members have informed the government that they have to bring palliative measures right yes, that was also yes they, read. They, are, they are giving conditions conditions they, for yes. but is that not too late uh it's it's, it's not the issue of palliatives if you ask me usually palliatives will come you hear some some hideous or some huge figure that has been stated that okay we've used for instance we've used uh 70 billion era for palliatives for nigeria and mm. you wonder which which part of nigeria was that issued to you understand mm. it's the same palliatives that were given during the COVID 19 uh, uh lockdown all that that a lot of people uh were were stranded later on realized that it was stuck somewhere so how effective or how well will the palliative reach a common nigerian because the common nigerian is the one bearing the brunt what are these palliatives now how well how what are these palliatives what is the accountability that these palliatives will get down to households because households are the people who are most affected yes, by this yes yes okay. another thing again it's not about the palliatives the policies could be given out and uh, could be given out and at most maybe a month or so but the first obviously continues i i i i anyway we have analysis analysis yeah, exactly, tell us more about exactly. that. but also i think the government should consider increasing salaries so if you increase fuel increase Price of commodities, goods and services will also increase. So you, how much are you getting from your minimum wage, and how mm. much will you use to buy food? To buy how food much will you use to buy food and all that when already that's been increased? So okay. I think all 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 these should be put in consideration. Okay, so um, let's step away from the subsidy news mm -hmm. for a little bit. A news came out this morning. Um, let me say statistics. This is on security matters. That from January to April, twenty twenty three. Nigeria has experienced 217 attacks from 34 states, right? Mm -hmm. And then we have 1,872 persons killed in attacks, 714 abducted, and 665, sorry, persons sustained injuries. Wow. This is, um, this is a high figure. And um, wow. we'd like to know that there's a lot happening elsewhere, in everywhere else in the country, and our focus is not on this. It seems mm -hmm. to be like this has just become a norm and that this, happens in the country. Yes, and this yes. happens every day. Every day. day. Every if we day. have this And I number, want to believe there's a figure that hasn't been, been registered. Yeah. There yeah. could possibly be, uh, I would say, <coughs> close to 10% or so that hasn't even been included in that figure. Yeah. So amidst all the hardship and everything, we still have a tax going on. Security we still have issues. all of we have. have lots of security issues and it's seeming to be the norm it shouldn't be the norm i think we'll have to talk about this some of the time yes uh, which which also brings us to what happened yesterday where mm. uh the president had talks with uh security operatives yes. talking about um reforming the security architecture he had he had he had a closed door about two hours closed door meeting with uh all all, all the security operatives in the country to see how they can move 
uh, away from the security situation because he made it, well, uh, he made it clear that security, education, infrastructure, uh, and one other thing will be his major priorities yes. for, uh, I would say, this administration. So let's hope that let's hope that the government stands by what they say. Mm -hmm. so not like the usual political, we we'll bring you this, we we'll bring you that, and it never gets uh, to be feasible. Or uh, we never get to see that. Yeah. Do we have any more news? Uh, no, I think uh, that's about the size of it. Well, uh, this is all we have for what has been happening all through from uh, Monday to Friday. That's the newspapers headlines and uh, up next as we promised earlier we'll be looking at what the subsidy holds for Nigeria, what the subsidy is and uh, the possibility of having a way out even it, it, even uh, with with the subsidy still on we'll be having our guests up next don't go nowhere the game of polo it's um my life polo is good so i just started and um still learning the basics. But I hope to be a pro in this game and God be by my side and know everything will be fine. I started four months ago. I started stick and ball four months ago though I attended the riding course in Pakistan. I've learned the riding basics but um, the game of polo four months ago I started stick and ball. Every day we went on the horse we break and once we come down as you can see I was about ending and I fell from the horse. It's a normal thing. In horse riding if you don't fall it's not started yet. So you need to train. You can see I'm sweating, I'm eating banana, it's part of it. You must train, you must eat well, and you must learn properly. I've chosen polo to be my own um, sport, and I've always looked up to people like um, General Kazir Fire, General MSA Ali, Colonel Waipelu, um, and General Laka, a few of them. I've looked up to these people, these are great polo players, and they've always encouraged me to play the game of polo. Welcome back. This is still New Dawn Nigeria on Viewer Television. As we promised you earlier, we have our guest in the house to help us give insights and more analysis on the subsidy removal and the policies behind the subsidy removal. Um, I have, we have with us in the studio Mr. Yusuf Dan Abeneba. Abenebe, yeah. He is a managing partner, DY Abenebe & Co a chartered accountant of chartered accountants and tax practitioners. He's a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, associate of Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, and a forensic accountant. I don't think anybody else is in the best position to give us insights and analysis on what is happening now in our country. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome, very much sir. for coming. What a profile, yeah. by the way. Yeah, what a profile. <laughs> what a profile. Um, so let's begin by um, asking you to help our viewers to understand. Yes, we're, we're here with the view that we have some listeners who do not know, who do not understand what subsidy is. So let's start by you helping us to explain what subsidy, and especially as it has to do with um, the fuel, the petrol subsidy. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, subsidy, it's just an amount. Layman language, you can call it an amount of money set aside to help in reducing the, 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 the cost of the goods and services in, the, in an industry or generally. Like in this case, now talk about fuel subsidy, meaning the government use some resources, some of its resources, give it to the petroleum cycle to to reduce the cost of 
uh, petroleum products. Ordinarily, the average price of uh, uh, petroleum products, especially uh, PNS, in the world market is about 600 naira a liter. Okay. That's about the average price of worldwide. And even nations around us, Togo, Ghana, and I think none of them sells fuel that's PMS for less than 450, no, 500 naira. Okay. From up to 650, to 650, 610, and there about. These are their current These prices? These are their current prices because their own fuel is not subsidized. Okay. Ours is subsidized, meaning if the average market price is about uh, 580, uh, uh, 580, 600, meaning the government and we are selling at 195, that was last week, last week. Yes. Meaning the government is spending over, is subsidizing each liter of oil for over 400 naira. Oh, wow. So subsidy is government paying to who? Subsidy is government paying, in this case now, paying to the people, to the, to the, to the major marketers who okay. import or sell the product. For them to be able to sell to the public at a price that is a uh, that is low, that is affordable, just to make life good for the, for the citizens. Okay. That is the intent. So why is there a need for the government to withdraw the subsidies at this point? Yes, it's painful, but it's just that it's not a policy that we can, that a reasonable government should continue with. It's painful. If you can imagine spending 400 and something on each liter of oil they consume each liter of oil. And they say uh, by, by the statistics, we consume about 660 uh, liter, six, uh, how was it called? Uh, is it 60 million, I'm saying? 60 million gallons okay. per day. Per day. That is our lo local consumption. Our local consumption. consumption. And, and the, the government subsidizes for? Subsidized. And the funny part is, the marketers brings in not that 60, but like 100. And we consume 60, but Fine. the government pays for 100. Pay for 100. You get to, we, 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 we consume 60. Yes. But the truth now is, most of this oil is not being consumed here. So what happens to the 40? Exactly. The, when they, when they bring, it, bring them in, since it's more expensive around us, the marketers take the oil from here and take it to the neighboring countries and sell it so that amount that should be subsidy for us, they, it's not like a gain, like a for profit them. for them, the the what we call the major market yes. and the marketers. And this is this is on them. This is not for the government. Not for government. And this so, is upon petrol that government have subsidized. subsidized. So Nigerians are not gaining from that forty percent uh, I would say gain, common Nigerians. It's it's only those at the top. It should be for everybody. But, but the truth is, very few people who deal in the products are the ones enjoying it. You see them riding on private jets because of this. In fact, they are making good money out of it. It's painful that this has to go for any reasonable government. It's really mm. painful because I know this money at least 10,000 dollars will not give me more than how many liters are doing our legislation this morning. That is, it's painful, but it just has to go because it's not sustainable. Like, I imagine a government borrowing to pay for subsidy. We're talking about, if you look, look at that calculation we talked about now, if mm. like a hundred, a 400 naira, 400, 400, 510 naira, uh, naira, if you multiply it by 100, uh, what's it called, 100,000 liter, I mentioned yeah. there. Yes, mentioned, yes, you mentioned it, yes. multiply it, a month we're talking about over 40 billion naira. Wow. Over 40 billion naira if you multiply it as in for, for sorry for, for I'm talking about a day consumption please. This is a day, a, a day day's consumption. So if you now multiply it by 36 30 days, mm. that's about about 1.2 trillion. Okay, so if if I may ask, the government is not just subsidizing this petroleum product for household use. Because um, I, I'm, I'm just guessing that we have um, companies and the rest that still use petrol. Government also subsidizes for organizations. Everything. Government, government subsidizes. Government subsidizes. 
every, as in everything that is being brought in to the country. Government subsidized, subsidized, whether used because at federal government level, every, every level, level. Every level, because everything, it, it's a chain. You know, so we, we all, we're all connected. The, the, the guys in the industry, in the companies who produce and sell, all this is just to make the cost affordable for the common Nigerians. That is the essence. Okay. So now, uh, you made mention of uh, 100, like 100% 100 coming, 40% going somewhere. Now, if they should remove the subsidy, do you, do you think it might help in uh, reducing the, I would say, uh, the 40% being taken somewhere and help a uh, common Nigerian? Or do, do you think it's, it will still continue and it's just the Nigerian still uh, going into uh, an, uh, another phase of suffering. If it's, if it is, you know, we have to have a systemic problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, ordinarily, if it is being, if that is being done, subsidy is being done. Meaning, if we are selling fuel, PMS in Nigeria at uh, maybe five ten, five fifteen, and in Ghana it's five ten, five maybe five twenty, five sixty. You may not need to, it will, be, it will not be, be profitable for you to move the fare from there, there. Because, because they are transportation Yes, costs. yes. If you look at it, the cost, the, the petroleum uh, price in Lagos is like 415 or mm. about. Yes. Coming to the north is increasing because of transport you know, and logistics. Yes. So something like that, and moving it across the border, where you have to even meet the customer, meet other people, set to this and that. You see that it will no longer be profitable. So if it's no longer profitable, um, I bet you our consumption will even come down from that system. We Already? Now know, it will come down. Yes. We will now know yeah. the exact yeah. quantity yeah. we are consuming daily. Yes. Yes. If the price is as in maybe close. Because mm. there won't be point you taking for five for fifteen here and going there to sell it at uh, maybe six hundred. Okay. That the difference can't cover can your cover. transport yes. cost. So in some way, the subsidy, are you saying the subsidy is beneficial to Nigeria as a nation and also to citizens and also to the household? In the long run, it's beneficial. In the long run, it is. In the short run, it is. It's because that is, that is the major problem because everybody has come out to say every government, everybody who campaigned said they were going to take up the subsidy. This has been in the talk since 2012, 2015, right from the time of President Goodluck Jonathan. It has been in the talks. But our problem right now, and a major question we want to ask is, with the rate of inflation at right now in Nigeria, can it accommodate for the subsidy being removed? Would there have been a better way for the subsidy to have been withdrawn at this point? In order we should think about politics. Uh, before you go into such things. Okay. Yet it mm. should plan ahead. Unfortunately, another government is taking over, a new government is taking over from another person. And the last government did not even make provision for the full year for the subsidy. Because mm. they're trying to even remove the subsidy. It's just maybe they don't have what it takes to just face the world maybe because of the hardship and uh, people see the, pre the president said he was uh, for the masses. Yeah. So they're making the masses suffer more. Yes, we will have just removed it, and maybe by now we'll have, we will have, have, get, uh, we'll have we have to get our balance. Now, you made mention of palliatives. Now, yes. do you think palliatives is uh, a way out for a common nature? We have seen the government bringing palliatives, and the results, even even the 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 the, the ripple effect that led to the. Mm -hmm. Uh, and SARS protests where a lot of stores were broke, uh, broken down and palliatives were seen stored that were meant for the masses. Do you still think bringing palliatives into this for something that is for a long run, palliatives that only maybe possibly will last for a month or weeks, do you think it's the right thing to consider? Anyway, it depends on which palliatives you're looking at when you made mention of palliatives. Ordinarily. If, we, if, our, if our race systems are working, so many of us will not need to be going to office with our cars. Mm. The money mm. yes. are working. Yes. So many of us leave our cars at home, especially people who just go to the office and work in a place. It makes life easy for you. Where you just go in there, go in there. But this driving on the road every day is not fun. You get better. We don't have such a 
facility here. That's what I was saying. Yeah. But if you look at now, uh, I agree with you. During the uh, uh, good luck era, when he attempted removing the subsidy, he they actually brought buses and this. Mm. Can you see them on the road today? No, they are not there. So it's difficult. It's a very messy situation for us because we don't have really have. The system is not just okay. This, these are one of the things that sorry. These are one of the things that um, the House of Representatives members talked about, and they, they were give, they told the government that they um, they should think about the CNG buses coming back on ground. That's the um, compressed natural gas buses. That's more effective. But we have these buses all packed somewhere, and then um, this fair. I I I read somewhere that um, the Chinese company Yulong also they had a fair here. Um, last year, they had a fair at the um, International Conference Center where they proposed these buses and everything. And the government at the time didn't make any moves, didn't make any initiatives. And now we're seeing them telling them, okay, let us go back to those buses. How can we go back to that now? Do we have enough time? Nigerians have are already, it's, it's already almost a state of chaos. People have packed their cars, people are trekking on the road. How much time do we think that the government has? to bring these buses if they need fixing, if we need to import them? That's why I say we're in a very messy situation. Mm. And if the other government have done it, now we'll have to be putting our balance. Yeah. But now, the situation we are now, this, this quick fix can't even come in now. It can't come in now. So, so we, we have to go to do this. It. We have to face it. That. It's difficult. It's, it's difficult, but we just have to face, face it. it. Okay, for the sake of things that are happening. I would like to just know if we can take inference from any other countries that have had to remove subsidies from any commodity, either petrol or anything. Do we have countries that we could, that we can take inference? Okay, this is how they went through the process and the citizens didn't have to suffer for it. If, 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 aside uh, Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, Arabia, virtually all countries don't even talk about subsidies again. Because mm. they, don't, they don't talk about subsidies. They buy things, and they allow the market forces to determine prices. So I can't even remember anyone that we don't really see any country that did that recently. Mm. Yeah. I can't remember any country that did that recently because it's just something that if it's just something that we also have to face. I wish we had faced it headlong during good luck. Exactly, when now inflation we, rate was really low. low. Now yes. We just, but the truth is, it has to go. It has to go. It has to. Are there any plans for income of citizens to go high, to go higher? Exactly. I think from I believe from the savings we get from because it's not a small savings. Yes. You are saying like forty a billion naira a day multiplied by thirty days. Mm. That's like one point two billion a year. You know what it? That's twelve. Yes. It's what is our budget? Yes, now with 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 another thing that you said, and uh, bringing back to what you you made mention earlier about forty percent, one hundred percent, looking at accountability to the money. Mm. Now a lot a lot has been brought out which we uh, haven't seen the impact. Uh, do you think the accountability factor of all this money will will, will somehow apply to a common Nigeria? That is it. If we can be accountable sincerely, there will be more money. Money will be saved. Mm -hmm. Then it will reduce borrowings. So you can imagine the amount we spend on subsidy. Let's say like a, 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 a trillion naira a month multiplied by twelve. That is over over twelve yes. billion naira. And our on this our budget, current budget, I think the cash we are expecting from sale of crude oil and other things mm. is over a little over ten, 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 ten trillion. Meaning, what we're even spending on subsidy, it's even more than what we're expecting. What we're expecting. You get, so, if we can get that, if we can get this money and well utilized, then it will reduce our borrowing. Mm -hmm. Then the government can even have time to, as in, to maybe invest more agricultural infrastructure and even to subsidize, or go to subsidy of agricultural programs. Mm -hmm. To encourage mm -hmm. people to go into farming. You farm more, and you know that when you farm, you can sell. You have a market that will buy your goods, and you can sell at a good price. I think people will go more into farming. And other and I can say you, you said you made mention of how um, our we sometimes have to borrow 
for yes. these subsidies, yes. right? But the government has said now that these monies that were supposed to be paid as subsidies will be diverted to other things. So are we still going to borrow to divert into other things? Because it's been said over and over by analysts like yourself that if we, if Nigeria is borrowing to just to just eat, let me use it in layman's terms, if Nigeria is borrowing to just eat, and we're not borrowing to probably invest in in other sectors that can help internally generate income. How is this helpful? It won't be helpful. That's the truth. Mm. You can borrow for consumption. Yeah. If we, we, with the savings we get from the subsidy, it, will, it, should, it should reduce our borrowing. The savings we get from there should reduce our borrowing. And even for our borrowing, because sometimes you borrow not because you don't have the money, but the money may not be available to you now. They may be receivables, we are expecting things to come in so you can borrow, even in our, our private lives. Yeah. Sometimes we borrow money to, to buy a car because you know you can afford it, but the money is not there now, then you pay yes. or buy. Mm. It's, not, it's not a bad thing to borrow, but borrowing to consume, to eat, is just, I think it's borrowed from infrastructure. I think it's a very good one because in the long run, so many infrastructures will make life easier for people. If there is electricity, people doing businesses will. Uh, we all businesses mm. will drive, you know, you, you understand? Yes. There's good electricity, meaning mm. people will even rely less, less on, on, oil, on the fuel at the bargain saloon and other other other, uh, mm. those, other businesses. They rely less on it. Mm -hmm. And in the long run, it's to better for us. So, talking about electricity, do you think reduction in um, our tariff prices or maybe reduction in taxes per se can help to cushion the effects on the on household, on the normal everyday Nigerian cities, because I'm guessing if we have to pay less for power, right, yes. and then we have to pay more for petrol now for transportation, I think it may balance because I am not assuming that we would have to pay the same billions that we pay to this um, Jenkos or discos if the government has to help to subsidize in those areas a little bit. Right? Do you think those will help? And just generally, if you can help us with ways that you think the government could have cushioned this effect before implementing this policy? We have said it all that the new government has just come unfortunately we have a hard transition. And the former government, the last government, did not even really prepare for this. But ordinarily, this question of things will have been done before this becoming of this government. But for now, there's nothing we can do that to fix it. Because the only thing you want to do that can't work now. There are no things that can Anything, happen. nothing can help us now. No, if it is okay, you're talking about uh, reduction in in uh, what is it called? The, 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 power, the power already is, is, is another sector. I, I think I was in the power sector for some time, as in, in, in a company for some like that, that is into power. That's my brother and my sister. Let's not just go into that. Yeah, it's, another, it's another topic for another for for it's just topic for another day because if you are giving more money to that sector now, hmm. you see they are closing here and, and opening. opening it somewhere else. Do you think that there, there is possibly any way that uh, private sectors could play a role to you know provide solution to the current hardship that Nigerians are facing? Maybe reduce some things or reduce prices of some things or consider the plight of the people in as much as they might think the government is not considering. Maybe uh, as, as the saying goes, the hand that washed the hand. Understand? Do you think the private sector has uh, anything that they can do to help cushion this thing before what uh, the government are planning to offer will come on board? Yeah, I, I think we should start from the government to we talked about taxes yeah. to bring down the tax rate or even give tax holidays. But we're mm. expecting savings much from this subsidy. <laughs> so we can even give, think about tax holidays for so many companies. No, mm -hmm. the previous government did something by saying companies would turn around uh, less than 25 million, million euro paid in tax, tax. CIT. Okay. From 25 to 100 million, pay 20 percent CIT company contracts, while 100 million above pay 30, the original 30 percent. So I think these are some of the things in their own 
wisdom they have they feel they have put in place for this. But I think the new government can do more by crashing it more so that the private sector can see that what they have to pay as tax can be used for production or it will not be part of their what should be paid that should be part of their profit at least for now to cushion the effect. So at least when we stabilize then they can now come about bring you back the taxes again. Well, uh, it's, it's, we would have loved to continue, but it seems like we're running out of time. But before we uh, let you go, I don't know if you have a word or two for Nigerians angry about this situation and also the government who are, uh, who are the implement, uh, who implemented uh, this, in as much as uh, from what the president said, it's supposed to be at the end of uh, this month, yes. but it has already uh being implemented so i don't know maybe you have a word or two for nigerians at large come on the commoners the, the the average nigerians and also the government yes i agree with the rest what i have to say is just to plead <laughs> we should be patient and let's see this is a new government and sincerely uh, uh president uh Aswaji yeah. did well as a governor in Lagos. Mm -hmm. In terms of internal regulatory revenue, mm. he did yeah. very well. Infrastructure, he did very well. Continuity, he did very well there. Education, he did very well. Let us be hopeful that he will replicate what he did there in Lagos and Nigeria. If he succeeds in doing that, I think we'll, uh, we'll, uh, Nigeria will, will benefit from that. So, for the uh, for average Nigerians, please let us just be patient and give this government. Uh, little time for uh, for us to see what will happen. But I believe so much in this government. I believe so much in us. Well. Not because of anything, but because of what he has done, done in the past. Yeah. Okay. Let him, I believe he can replicate at the national level. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. All right, thank you so much for coming on with mm -hmm. us this morning. Thank, thank you for you. giving us so much insights and information. We hope that next time when we call on you, when we have matters like this, would have your attention. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank and you. that's all on State of the Nation. Um, do stay with us. We have a very interesting guest coming up next to talk about Global Day of Parenting, which came up on the 1st of June. Don't go anywhere.
Welcome back. This is still New Dawn Nigeria if you're just joining us. So, um, 1st of June every year since um, the year 2012 is a day set aside to celebrate parents, to honor and appreciate parents globally for the wonderful and amazing job that parents do all over the world. And here to talk to us about something we call intentional parenting, I have, we have with us, sorry, in the studio, Yudi Ketandu, Mrs. Yudi Ketandu. She's a mother of three amazing kids and she happens to be the best person to let us in on what intentional parenting is. You're welcome to the studio. Thank you. Very much. It's You're fine welcome. to call you Yudi, you. right? Yes. Yudi is. is fine. <laughs> All right. So um, just, just, just tell us, tell us what intentional parenting is, especially as regards to raising children in this time and era. All right, thank you so very much, um, Chinonso. Uh, thank you. <laughs> All right, so um, intentional parenting is it's, it's a strategy that every parent needs to come up with, um, targeted at being able to achieve a particular family goal. That's what intentional parenting is. Okay. So when I talk about intentional parenting, most times what comes to mind is, you know, people are wondering, okay, the fact that I have children or I intend to have children, is that not enough? Mm. No, it's not. It's absolutely not enough. If you're going to have children, then you need to be able to say to yourself, what do we want to achieve as a unit, a family unit? So from that point, you begin to create strategies that would um, help you achieve your family goals. Mm -hmm. People call them family values or um, um, what it is your family wants to be known for. So you have to be strategic about it. You have to know what it is you need to do from the onset. What I mean from the onset is the moment conception takes place, you know what the goal is. The moment your child can say, Baba, you mm. know what the goal is. You begin to instill in each child the values from the onset. So most times what we find out is that people wait until their children are probably teenagers. And mm. then I'm sure you've heard the slogan, oh, teenagers, they're always crazy. Yeah. No, they are not. What actually happened is that as a parent, you actually did not instill anything inside of that child when that child was given to you as an empty canvas. Mm. So the child comes, guess what? It's just like going into the computer store and getting yourself a brand new laptop. When you buy a brand new laptop, what do you do? You begin to install every single thing that is needed that will give you the results that you want from that particular gadget. And that's the way children are. So they come to you completely and totally empty. Now, your family values and goals are the things that you begin to install inside that child to navigate through life and then achieve the, the intent, your family intent. Now, family intent varies from people based on your cultural background, your environmental background, how you were raised, your family name, and all of that. So you cannot sit down and just watch your children go through life and pick things from maybe the family of Bashi. Um, they go somewhere else, they pick something from the family of Olushagu. They go somewhere else, they pick something from the family of Okorafo. No, you don't do that. You know what the family values are. You know what your family goal is. You begin to come up with strategies. Intentionally, let me use the word, is it formatting now? You know, mm. installing inside each child what it is you want them to achieve. So, so that's, that, is, that is the summary of what that's intentional summary, parenting summary is. Um, intentional. Now, you made mention of intentional. Is there uh, unintentional parenting? Yes, there is. And what, 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 what are the futures of uh, having an unintentional parenting? Okay, so let's, let's take it from the side of intentional. 
Okay. So when you're intentional about something, you sit down and you put in the work process into that thing. You think through it. So um, boy meet girl, girl meet boy. Oh, I love you. I want to be with you. And then next phase is I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Now, at that point of wanting to spend the rest of your life together, you need to also find out what are we about as a couple? What is our family going to be known for? And again, um, of course, um, not to offend anyone, one thing I always say is, you see, God is intentional with mankind. Mm. When he created man, he was very clear on what he wants to achieve with man here on earth. So if he has put you here on earth, if he has placed you here on earth, there's, there's a goal. There's a goal. You have your own bits to play. You have your own parts to play. And every family you need to have their parts to play to make the world a better place. Hmm. So you need to be able to discover your own bits. And most times it is also embedded on the leadership of the husband, who is the head of the family, to be able to give that direction. So with being armed with <coughs> excuse me, being armed with this information, you know, you say, okay, you know what? I'm gonna spend my life with this, my beautiful girl. And both of you will sit down and say, if this is where we're going, we're gonna have maybe just one child, two or three or four or ten, as you both decide. What are we going to achieve? When you do that, you sit down, intentionality now comes in you sitting down. You no, know, carving out the strategy and then checking those strategy at every point to make sure that things are going as planned. Now, unintentional parenting is you not knowing what the, the intent is, what the goal, what the focus is. You, of course, you have no idea and you're not ready to put in the work. It's a lot of work. Work as in W-O-R-K. You're not ready to put in the work to structure to come up with a strategy, to clearly define what the goal is. It's, it's a hell of work. It's plenty of work. And then you're also not ready and miss your busy life schedules to be able to say, okay, you know what, at this point and at this point, no, 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 we need to tweak here. We need to tweak here. Oh no, we need to go in this direction. Let's retrace our steps. Let's go in this direction. So that's, that's what unintentional parenting is. So you just allow things. To mm. just go. You know. Okay, so um, is, is there a particular standard or is there a particular system that every family should follow or it varies? Is there a particular system? That's one. This is a two question in one. And then you also mentioned something about strategies. So would like to know like practically what are these strategies? What, what parts in raising a child does it affect? say they are going to school they are this they are that what you want to see them do at particular ages and stuff how do we go about these steps to see that okay i'm intentional about raising this child okay so um like i would always say to i i mentor young couples i'm intending um couples and i always tell them that um you know you need to be able to there are not two marriages that that would ever be the same Mm. And I think that's also where people mix it. So a young man sees a young lady and they're both married maybe three years, four years, five years. And he feels, oh no, this is how my mom does it. Then you're just setting up yourself for failure. So you, you, you have the ability to be able to sit down and say, okay, you know what? Based on where it is, we're going, my intuition, you know, my God feeling, what I think God wants us to do and achieve as a family, this is where we're headed. And the wife becomes a strong support system also in making sure that that thing happens. Now, when we talk about strategies, I can't sit here and just tell you, oh, um, these are the strategies I've used. I have mm. a, a, my first child is 2017 this month. Oh. You know, um, I have 17, I have 14, and then the youngest one is 10. And three of them, I work with them, with them each of them as an individual. I don't sit down and say, okay, there's a blanket. But of course, we have our family values, which is universal. There are certain things that we cut across, probably because of where we're from or um, how we've been raised. You will see similarities in different families, but there are similarities. But beyond that, it is still something that you would have to 
sit down by yourself with your spouse and agree on. So, um, um, coaching is important. Mentoring is important. It could just be a family friend, family friends, uncle, or somebody who it, it doesn't really, yeah, you know, at times it's very easy to say, okay, maybe get a coaching program and all that. Well, in the absence, absence of that, you could just look at maybe a family you admire and then pick one or two things from that family. But you cannot completely mirror another family. It's, it wouldn't work. It will not work. You know, so example, um, I have a girl child first mm -hmm. and then I have a, a two boys, you know. So when my first son was in primary school, he had come back home one day and rolled his yeah, mm -hmm. he, there was something about his sleep shirt, mm -hmm. you know. And he walked into the house and I'm like, ah, what is with this? And he's like, oh, mom, you know, my classmates, blah, 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 said, I called him. And I mm -hmm. said to him, Ross, in this family, God is going to do this, 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 this with us. We're raising nation builders, global change makers. As a global change maker, you I'm cannot be looking this. like this. <laughs> this is the image you need to portray. And because of that, we will not allow you to do this. Mm. You see, I took my time to break it down. I didn't just say, hey, come on, which is what most parents do. That child, like I said, is an empty canvas that have come to you. Mm -hmm. So there's curiosity. Mm. They want to try something. It's not enough to say no. Why are you saying no to me? Why would you rather have me um, greet someone? I have, I have someone who works in my house who is elderly. And this morning, just very this, this morning, my daughter came out. And you know, the ladies, I heard the lady say, oh, good morning to her. And she said, good morning back. The lady woman passed, I turned to her. I said, auntie, we do not uh, wait for elders to greet us first. Hmm. Do you, you understand? Yeah. And I'm very stern. Body language, everything will tell my child that this is a no no, an absolutely no. So I'm not telling you a no no and I'm patting you at the hmm. back. These are also strategies. You know, how do you firmly pass your message across to your child and your child gets the message? So I just told her straight up. She's like, oh, mommy, I'm sorry. I, I just, you know, bumped into her. It will not repeat itself again. I didn't, I didn't slap her. I didn't shout at her. Didn't, but I passed the message across. And it all gets towards what, what it is we intend to achieve as a family. Unit. So I don't, I don't know if I'm able to. I was able yes, to answer yes, that. Yes, you were. Um, so you, you mentioned something about values. How cultural values and the rest is what influences some of the things you want to instill in a child. Mm -hmm. So and I'm just thinking... Um, in a case where your values sometimes do not align with, um, say, let me say human rights globally or something, and then, but you want this child to grow up or to, okay, let me say, for example, or in this particular culture, when children are getting married, it's expected that they dress in this particular way, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're also trying to this, and then it is not seen globally as, it's, a, it's, it's not an acceptable, acceptable practice globally how do you balance that between raising your child intentionally according to your cultures and it is clashing with a globally accepted principle for raising a child because we know there's a lot of rights child rights human rights and everything going around now how do you balance that okay so for our family we are um our, our spiritual beliefs are very strong um it's 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 a major influence in everything we do. And when we talk about spiritual belief, it is belief in God. Mm -hmm. And then the belief that, you know, whatever it is we do, we have a relationship, a personal relationship mm -hmm. with Jesus. Yeah. And that's what drives what we do. Um, so when we talk about global beliefs, you and I would also agree that there's a, there's, there's a global um, crisis right now when it has to do with parenting. I don't know whether you've been following the Western yeah. world. And as far as I'm concerned, the world is in serious super chaos. And then um, it would also be, uh, uh, what's the right word to use for you as a parent to sit down and think that, oh, 
you know, it's happening there. It doesn't concern me. So if you're a parent in Nigeria and right now you've not sat down to really think of the effects that probably would have on your own children right here in Nigeria, in Abuja, in your house, then you are you're just playing. According to my person, you say, Mommy, just be playing. You're just playing. Right now, you need to be, to be able to have thought through that process by yourself as a parent with your spouse and then ask yourself, um, let's assume that your child, who is probably four years old, you know, has that information, so much information, and yet you don't even know what to do or what to say to that child. So you need to be an informed parent. Mm. You really need to be an informed parent. You need to, yeah, you know, thinking about it, that's part of what I said I was going to talk about. You know, you can be a stay-at-home mom. You know, shout out to all the stay-at-home moms. I am a stay-at-home mom. I do all my business from the house, and that's primarily because of my children. Mm. You know, you can be a stay-at-home mom, and yet not be available. Mm. You can be a, so, you, you, I know one time we talked about the whole working mothers and how mm. do they balance mm. out. See, if you're, if you're working at your job, please keep at it. Keep at it. It doesn't have to be you closing up that aspect of your life to come and see that. You can sit down at home and not, and not impact one child. How much more? Three or four or five? You can. So it's, it's, it's a decision that you have to make. And then when you make that decision, you come up with a strategy. On a global basis, you want to also ask yourself, if the UN is coming up with... Um, or UNICEF is, mm. is talking about child rights and all that. What does that mean? What's the mm. interpretation? You need to also look at it based on what are your own family principles. You can't tell me that I have my child at four and I cannot discipline my child. I went for one parenting event one time. I, I laughed. Mm. And they said, oh no, you know, don't hit, don't touch. That's okay, no problem. I don't I agree with you. But please break it down for me. He said, you know, put them in naughty corner. I said, in this Nigeria. <laughs> Kilonjen naughty corner. <laughs> what is naughty corner? And I explained certain things there and then. What was this? I will have a conversation with you. I start having conversations with my children as the moment they begin to talk. Hmm. I have conversations. So there's a lot of patience that, come, that, that comes into play. So you sit down and you have that conversation with the child. You know, people used to wonder when they come to my house, I have clay pots everywhere in my house. All my clay pots that got broken were domestic staff. Mm, yes, the there's none, none that was broken by any of my children. Oh no, that child, okay. maybe that's your own family value. Hmm. But you see, there are certain things you need to be able to drive into a child. So if the word powers are saying, okay, no, don't, the child has a right to tell you that, oh, right now I am feeling like a girl when mm. the child is a boy. And then you as a parent, you want to follow global views. How far can that take you? Does it contradict what your family believes? If it doesn't contradict it, please be my guest. Mm. Do you understand? Okay. Yeah. yeah, if it doesn't contradict yeah. your family Me. values, mm. of course, be my guest. Um, I, 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 you, you've made mention of um, you creating uh, a value for the family to follow. Now, uh, I don't know if I'm the only one noticing this, but most of the clergy. Uh, children in Nigeria who are respected men or I would say uh, religious men mm -hmm. happen to have one of the uh, craziest children. Set of children. Yes. So do you think there's something they are doing wrong or do you think uh, the, 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 the type of mentality they are instilling in their children is not uh, good enough? Okay, so I wouldn't use the word good enough because primarily I don't stay with them. I don't live with them. Mm. So um, I really can't say. But this is one thing I know that cuts across every family. 
a consequence when you diligently instill the right values in your children listen it guides them as a compass anywhere they find themselves i've had people tell me things like eh, no you did just leave it now god handed it mm. do you understand and i don't argue like i said it's also what you have on the inside of you and what you want to believe before i got married on campus i had two examples that were friends a guy who was an only child of his parents um you know we were very good friends on campus now i mean he's not a church boy you know what i mean there was nothing to say he's but we're very good friends so i knew him you know a couple of times he had tried to make make some very crazy move on campus and i would leave him you know how you just come meet and say okay i'm going to and, and he moves and i'm like ha and i go back only for him maybe to come to my hostel in the morning and he's screaming my name from the back and i rushed and i'm like what is it i couldn't do it hmm. not once not twice not three times on campus a lot of people felt oh he was that guy but me i know all of those things nothing he couldn't not because he didn't want to not because he didn't want to but he just could not do it and he got me thinking by the time we graduated we all moved to abuja i had, I had to ask him i asked him a question and he said to me he said do you know that his mother kept telling him that you cannot do evil she kept you know she just kept speaking it and i watched those things happen he wasn't in, in any campus fellowship he wasn't in anything we had another i have another friend too a female friend too the same thing right under my nose and then mm -hmm. i realized that you know what these things if you actually work at them you will get and you instill them yes so quickly before we let you go let me ask we have a last question because this is my personal view and i have a couple of people who are sent to this that um i feel that there is there is a um, there is a particular um how do i put it now attack on the male gender right but i also i, I okay my let me use this as, my as <laughs> let me use this as my personal um example like when i gave birth to my first son in 2015 and there was a lot happening in that era it was the era of um isis beheading there was a lot happening mm -hmm. when i went for a scan and i saw it was a boy i was scared if i the doctor almost beat me there and they're like why i and my wife were looking for a boy i said because i feel it is harder to raise a boy mm -hmm. than it is to raise a girl i feel like a girl i would just lay my life for her as a template and she follows so i felt like it was going to be really difficult raising a boy and it's a concern right now so i'd want to know like is there a particular way you think that families should begin to raise the boys the boys different from the girls okay so let me use this word i know it's a strong word but let me use it um mm -hmm. families had ignored the male gender for too long mm -hmm. the male gender had been ignored now we look at it and just it, a lot of people won't agree with me based on that statement but that it's what it is so what do i mean by that society have ignored the, the male child you know it just seems like if you have a male child the child will grow and raise itself mm. so we pay attention to the girl or you don't want your girl child to be molested your female girl to be molested mm. oh you don't want a guy you're looking you're looking did the guy just look at my daughter like that mm. but you're not thinking of the boy who is right under you and then there's also a lot of out of that ignore, ignoring them there's also a lot of pressure on the male gender as well unspoken pressure quick example i have a 14 year old son who at one point between 12 and 13 i just noticed that you know he was recoiling and i was like what exactly is happening here and then i noticed you yeah, are dropping off in school i want to give him a hug so we, uh, we do a lot of touch in my house mm. I want to give him a hug and he's like mom and i'm like okay 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 so of course i'm like i respect you but it got me thinking and i needed to think very quickly because one i was very clear that i didn't want boys that cannot open up hmm. in my house everybody must we say everything if you, if you, you'll be shocked like we say everything and everybody would have an input in your life 
So I tell them, I said, there's no my life in this house. Mm. It is our life. Right. Mm. So I just, I kept thinking about it. And then one day I sat him down and I realized that because he's my son, a boy, and he's getting to that, he's just entering that um, teen, pre teen stage. I just assumed that my husband, who is the male figure, mm. would take him up and do the same thing I'm doing with my daughter and I've done with my daughter. So it was an assumption on my own path. When the man is building, this is building. His mind, he's not, I'm over. Yeah, he, you talk to your spouse and they think, you think they know all, both of you are on the same page at every point, but you still need to check in. So I just realized that that was what was happening. So I had a conversation with my husband and we agreed that all oh, the deficiencies here and there, here and mm. there. And I said to him, I'm going to have to step in. So I called my person, sat down with him and had a heartfelt conversation. I didn't just point out those things, but I showed him the consequences. By the time he's 30, 40, 50, what the result will be if he continues like this? And how it's going to affect his relationship with the girl of his dreams, his work. I mean, no, there's nobody you will show that that wouldn't say, oh, okay, you know what? what I have to read. Let, let's Please, read this. Let us do the work. And that was it for me. So I have a son now who hugs me, who he just comes, he hugs, like he gives his sister a full hug now. And I'm like, guy, he said, you people are looking for a hug now. Let us be hugging each other. You know, we laugh. So that, that's it. We had those conversations back and forth. And since then, I've been, you know, paying attention to him, showering him with words like I do my daughter. And it's working. He's okay. opening up, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, uh, that's uh, the size of what we have for uh, today. We're talking about global D for parenting. And uh, it, it, it has been interesting. Uh, knowing about that I'm, I'm still not a parent but at least i've learned one, <laughs> one or two right. uh, I, I don't know if uh, on a final note on a quick let's say two seconds maybe you have a thing or two to say to parents out there okay so what i would like to say is this i know that parents a lot of parents are struggling with raising their children mm -hmm. i mean we cannot even just assume that um a lot of parents are doing well there, there's a lot of pressure societal pressure, economic pressure, um, peer pressure from, you know, friends. Oh, this is how my children are. And, and if you're in Abuja too, you know, academic pressure is another, another aspect too. So, but what I want to say to every parent out there is this. It's never too late to start. Even if your children are all teenagers already, even if um, probably your first child, second child is already working and you, you could, from this session, you've just realized that, oh my God, I've missed it. Mm -hmm. There is always a way to retrace your step. Mm -hmm. Be available. Don't just be a present parent. Mm -hmm. Be available. Um, if you need to reach out for help, look around you, you would definitely find help. And for those of us who just probably you're just new in, in the marital space, or you're expecting your first child, um, please, parenting is a lot of work. You need to put in the work. You know, like the way we get we get new jobs and they do the, the process of onboarding, mm -hmm. uh, where they tell you, okay, this is what the company expects of you. And you go out of your way to personally develop yourself, to fit in that role, to execute the job description, the things that are expected of you, the way you do it is the same way you need to put in the effort when it has to do with parenting. So if you think it is something you probably might not be able to give, then please have the number of children that you can give that time to. There's nothing wrong with deciding to have one child. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in as much as I'm an advocate of four children. So don't worry about me. I have only three. Don't worry. Just give birth to four for us. But all the same, like I'm saying, there's, 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 it's not too late. So you can learn the things you need to learn and you can get guidance if you ask for it. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Judy, for coming. Thank you. Thank you. We know um, that we have learned one or two things from you and we hope we'll okay. have your attention when next we need you in the studio. That's right. Yes. And that's all we can take on this segment. We have our tech reviews coming to you right after the break. Please don't go anywhere.
I hope you've learned a lot from uh, all the interviews that we've had. Uh, that's from fuel subsidy to the international parenting day, which was uh, every June 1st. That was a very, very enlightening one. Well, remember, these will be up and running every Fridays here on this platform. Talking about uh, Fridays, Saturdays, and of course, uh, Sundays. Well, these how far we can go for today. Well, my name is Philip Sliven, and... Um, and I am Chinon Sopam, and we leave you in the able hands of a yogi who will teach you one or two things about yoga. Please don't forget to join us again next week. Until we come your way again, take care. My name is Deborah Tesopo. I hail from Benue State, Gumaloka Government Area. I reside in Taraba State, Chalingo. Um, yoga is just basically a form of exercise that deals more with flexibility aspect. I actually started practicing yoga. That was October 2019. This is a lotus, lotus assonance, that's lotus pose. The warrior assonance, here. Yeah. It's still the warrior pose, but for the right hand side, because we do we do we do it left and right. Um, one, it increases hormonal activities, that is um, flexibility during sex, and it also reduces um, severe menstrual cramps because I'm also a witness to that. I've been having terrible menstrual cramps sometimes, it gets to the point of being admitted in the hospital, but when I started it, it really eased it a lot. And it also improves energy and vitability. It, um, it strengthens the muscles. And it's not all about, yoga is not all about the flexibility part. It also teaches, um, what's the name, 
perseverance, um, determination. So it kind of works on the mind to withstand some certain difficulties. Yeah, that's a scorpion pose. Before I couldn't do this except I make use of a wall as a support. So whenever I post videos or pictures using the wall as support, my mentor always tell me that you're way too big for this. You should start learning how to do, practice a scorpion pose without making use of the wall. It actually took me time. Yeah, this is a bridge, bridge pose. And we are going down to the half bridge. I see myself from now, in the next two to three years owning a brand of my own and my desire is to have different branches in different states. Actually there are other challenges that are holding holding this plan back. One of them is financial challenges um, for affording yoga costly equipment is a challenge. Yes, because even over there in the north, before I got a yoga mat, I was charged at a very high rate. Well, I got it cheaper at Lagos. <laughs> 